When you develop a successful video game, it's a great opportunity to build a franchise with sequels. You can give fans what they want and make a ton of cash at the same time. But sometimes, instead of building on the successes you've already achieved in previous games, developers can take games in a completely different direction. Sometimes it works, usually it doesn't, and sometimes it's just plain bizarre. I'm Joe Hendry from What Culture Gaming, and here are 10 bizarre video game sequels. Let's kick things off with GoldenEye Rogue Agent, because GoldenEye 007 was a groundbreaking, amazing game, and for that reason, it obviously needs a direct sequel. Or how about a game with not James Bond, but a genetic agent called GoldenEye with an actual golden eye. The makers of the original Rare were offered the chance to make the sequel, but they instead decided to decline and go their own way to make the amazing Perfect Dark. So the rights went to EA Games and this was the result. The game itself isn't terrible, but the gameplay just doesn't come anywhere close to matching up to the original. With a somewhat lazy concept, it's hard to buy into this as a direct sequel to the original GoldenEye 007. Up next, it's Star Fox Adventures. Now, this isn't on the list because it's a bad game, because it's not. Star Fox Adventures is a damn good game, but it just doesn't feel like a title that fits into this series. If you go back to Star Wing for the SNES and Star Fox from the N64, what fans had come to expect was this high speed action soaring through space, destroying everything in your path. But what we actually got was an adventure game that's mostly played out on foot. Now the reason is, is that this game wasn't actually intended to be a Star Fox game. This was intended to be Dinosaur Planet, but they decided they needed a strong launch title for the GameCube and they needed a big franchise to kick things off. Lead software engineer Phil Tossel said he was slightly disappointed about having to change from Dinosaur Planet to Star Fox because the team would attach the idea, but they saw the potential of that big franchise. In closing, it's a good game, but it's just not the sequel that fans wanted at the time. Another sequel that's bizarre but actually quite good is Metroid Other M, because we must stress, again, this isn't a bad game. Again, it's a great game, but this isn't what fans were expecting because this game really removed the elusiveness of the Samus character and tried to bring her personality to the forefront. And this game allows you to switch beautifully between 2D and 3D and it looks polished as hell. But what we know and love Metroid for is that sense of alone, that creepy background of the Metroid universe that we know was thrown to the side here to bring the character of Samus to the forefront. This was a bold effort to do something different with the Metroid franchise, but here at What Culture Gaming, I think we prefer the vibe that the series had before. So after a couple of bizarre sequels that were actually pretty good in their own way, it's time for one that really wasn't. Bomberman Act Zero. What they decided to do with this sequel is get rid of the cartoon figure that you know and love and you know what, let's make it edgy, let's make it 3D and any time you try to do that, it's never going to succeed. It had horrible camera angles and unbalanced AI and wait for it, no save function. So you had to get through those 99 levels back to back in this dull, gritty, horrible environment with none of the cartoon charm that you know and love from this series. Continuing with this trend, it's Sonic the Hedgehog. No, not the original, the 2006 version. And the reason I bring this one up is because this was the real big attempt to bring the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise back to form, to bring this troubled franchise home to where it belonged. But what happened? We got a half-finished attempt at a game that was rushed, had horrific loading times, was filled with glitches, had sloppy controls and a terrible soap opera opera plot. Perhaps worst of all, it features an inappropriate relationship between Sonic the Hedgehog and a human being. So as well as being a disappointment, it's effectively a cartoon game that promotes bestiality. Sonic Mania, please please save us. Up next, it's Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Now, this is a strange one because in retrospect, the gameplay in this game is absolutely unbelievable. And it seems to me that Kojima is just the king of self-sabotage. It's like he trolls us on purpose. Do you remember the trailer? Do you remember the demo for this game, Tanker? When you first played Tanker for the first time, you knew that Metal Gear Solid 2 was gonna be hands down the greatest video game ever made. But instead of giving us an action adventure, adventure game that we wanted with Solid Snake at the helm, instead we got Raiden. Now as times moved on and with the benefit of hindsight, I've learned to appreciate where Metal Gear Solid 2 sits in the Metal Gear Solid timeline, but it's not the only offence in the series. He did it again with Metal Gear Solid 5 because this is a game with unparalleled gameplay, but it just feels half finished. It didn't have the traditional boss fights, there's so many cutscenes that we later saw that didn't make the game, and what the hell was that ending? It's like they ran out of time and money in the 
the ongoing dispute between Kojima and Konami. They just thought, you know, have we got enough here? We've ran out of time and money, but ah, just make that the ending, it'll be fine. Moving on to number four, it's Super Mario Brothers 2. Let's look back at what happened here, because the original Super Mario Brothers was the quintessential platformer that changed the face of gaming. And for the sequel, it would surely make sense to build upon everything that we love from the original, add in some new features, and here we've got a winner on our hands. But when Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels was released, it was decided that that would be too difficult for the Western market. So instead of giving us a new game or The Lost Levels, what we got was Yumi Kojo Doki Doki Panic reskinned with Super Mario Brothers characters. Again, this plays pretty well and it's got a fun soundtrack, but it's just not the Super Mario Brothers that we know and love. It's an anomaly in the series, and for that reason, it's a bizarre sequel. Up next is Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures. The original Pac-Man was the best-selling arcade game in America, shipping over 350,000 arcade units. It's a simple yet addictive gameplay format that stands to this day with a huge huge array of spin-offs and sequels, but one that went in a completely different direction was Pac-Man 2, because this was a side-scrolling adventure game. This was a shock for many fans of the series, so at least they had the decency to include Miss Pac-Man on the SNES version and Pac-Man Jr. for the Genesis version. This was a unique change of direction, but it didn't last long as Pac-Man quickly got back to its roots of what made it successful in the first place. Our second last bizarre sequel of the day is Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. Now this game was well received, it's just a total anomaly in the series because instead of building on the top-down bird's eye view that we knew from The Legend of Zelda, they instead decided to go for a side-scrolling adventure game just like Pac-Man 2 did. What's also interesting is this is the only direct sequel to the original Legend of Zelda for the Nintendo Entertainment System because all the other games are either prequels or take place in alternate universes. This was initially a disappointment for some gamers, but I think we can let them off the hook given the way that they rectified the problem by given us The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. We've reached the end of our list now and I've left this one to last. It's Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. The reason that I've put this as the most bizarre sequel is because it's as if this game trolls you on purpose. Banjo-Kazooie was a beloved franchise from the N64 and you remember Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, you knew what the fans wanted, you knew why we wanted to play the game. It was very simple, just give us a modern remake of that amazing gameplay from the N64 that we know and love, but instead, when you start playing the game, you think that's exactly what it's going to be, and you quickly find out that this isn't a Banjo-Kazooie adventure that you've been waiting for, it's instead a car building sandbox game. During development, the team said that they wanted to create something that goes beyond just your standard platformer, but unfortunately that's what fans wanted, and in its own right, this again isn't a bad game, but it just it just feels like a slap in the face for people that wanted another Banjo-Kazooie adventure. We hope you've enjoyed this list of bizarre video game sequels. I'm Joe Hendry, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, please do. My handle is at Joe S. Hendry, and make sure that you like, share, and subscribe love to have you back. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time.